Time and time, I couldn't help but think, is it possible that the killer is still out there? I think many clues in the Idaho murder case point us to a possible killer in Oregon. If that's the case, how did we pick up Brian Koberger? And is it possible the killer is still out there? We first have to travel back in time. By the end of this video, you will see why I raised this question. But first, let's hear a word from our sponsors. Hey guys, I had no idea my personal information was so available to everyone on the internet. I mean, even my address was exposed online. Have you ever Googled yourself and been so shocked to see all of your personal information exposed on one of those public listing sites? For example, if you search your name right now on Google, you'll be surprised by what personal information is exposed. I did this with myself and found my address, my family members, and even my bank account. I started to think, hey, maybe that's why I get those 1-800 callers asking me if my car warranty expired. I felt so unsafe and vulnerable, and I started to think about ways to secure my information. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's video sponsor, Aura. Casper, what's Aura? Aura is an identity protection service. They'll scour the internet for all of your information that is made public and delete it for you. I get emails from Aura saying, hey, somebody was looking for your name or somebody was looking for your social security number. Would you like us to delete it? Absolutely, I would. You can try Aura free for two weeks using my link on the screen. Aura also does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats that you cannot see. It's super easy to set up so you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and many more. You get everything at one affordable price. One feature that I really love about Aura is their parental controls and safe gaming. I have younger relatives who always ask me to play a game on my phone or computer. It's simple. I'll just block certain sites that I don't want them to visit, and Aura handles the rest. Aura is also powered by AI, so it has text and voice monitoring to keep your child away from online cyberbullying, online predators, and scams 24-7. You literally have nothing to lose. All you got to do is click the link in my description below, which is Aura.com forward slash Casper West. They are going to hook you up with a two-week free trial. Give it a shot. See if it works. Go find your personal information. Check your credit report. Go and protect your family. Get this information wiped off the internet. Again, the link is in the description. Now let's get back to the video. On August 13, 2021, there was a stabbing death of a man and injuries to a woman at a house between Salem and Silverton, Oregon. Travis and his wife, Jamelin, were stabbed multiple times when an assailant broke into their house near the intersection of Howell Prairie Road and Hazel Green Road in East Salem at about 3 a.m. Travis was pronounced dead at the scene and Jamelin was stabbed multiple times but survived. That case is still unsolved. Marion County Sheriff's Office spokesperson Don Parisi declined to say if there were any suspects that had been identified. At a news conference that Wednesday, Moscow Police Chief James Fry had been made aware of the unsolved Salem case and said, the thing I can say to that is, it's still under investigation. But police, two days later, then said that they had ruled out any connection between the two stabbings. Our investigators are looking at any possible connection to an unsolved double stabbing in the Salem, Oregon area about a year and a half ago. Specifically, two people stabbed in their home in the middle of the night. Long knife, no suspect at this point. One died, one survived. I think we're looking at every avenue and um, we have other agencies reaching out to us with um, other cases and stuff that we are doing follow up on. And we will continue to follow up on those. Are you aware of that case? I actually had a uh, tip come in on that case and I forwarded it to our tip. Moscow police stated there have been numerous media inquiries about a 1999 double stabbing in Pullman, Washington and a 2021 double stabbing in Salem, Oregon. While these cases share similarities with the King Street homicides, there does not appear to be any evidence to support the cases are related. Now, although Moscow police said this doesn't appear to be related, 
Travis was also stabbed to death with a long knife in the middle of the night by a masked man. I'm curious, why did it only take two days to rule out any possible connection to the Idaho murder case? The Conclavis family stated that the police had ruled out people too fast as well. Christy Conclavis stated, I just feel like there have been a couple of individuals that were cleared very fast that maybe should not have been. Why are they clearing people so fast? If you notice, there's a trend in many of these cases in these small towns. The case of Wazoo student Luke Tyler was declared a self-deletion, although the parents believed the cause was due to hazing, along with 12,000 other people signing the petition to ban Theta Chai. In addition to that, Luke Tyler had many friends online demanding justice for his death, even went as far as to sign a petition to ban Wazoo fraternity Theta Chai and charging the people responsible. Now the case of Hudson Lowe, whose death was ruled an accidental drowning, police found his body near a creek and said there was no evidence of any foul play. A user in the community stated, police immediately said there was no foul play upon finding his body. How? What led to him ending up in the creek that night? Everyone was just like, he drowned and moved on. He also allegedly took a picture outside of the Idaho murder house before he died. Now in the case of the unsolved Oregon stabbing, Travis was knifed 29 times by a masked man who broke into his home at 3 a.m. His wife, Jamelin, was also attacked, but survived, despite suffering 19 stab wounds, one of which severed the muscle in her hand. In a separate, unsolved stabbing in the area, a 71-year-old woman named Sandra Ladd was found dead in her home in Washougal, Washington, on June 14, 2020. Police stated her death was ruled a homicide after the medical examiner found multiple stab wounds in her torso. The two attacks happened 14 months apart, but within 70 miles of one another. The locations are roughly a five-hour drive west of Moscow, Idaho. In another echo of the University of Idaho murders, the killer was able to slip into the home undetected and took nothing from the property. He also carried out the murder using a large military-style knife, and police were left baffled by the lack of an obvious suspect or motive. It also occurred on the 13th, the same as the Idaho murders. Now, why would a man randomly attack college students, an elderly woman, and a man and his wife who are completely innocent? Could this be related to the Idaho student murders? Sounds like a serial killer. Moscow PD confirmed that the attack in which Jamelin was stabbed 19 times was on his team's radar. Like in the Idaho case, the killer struck as other people were inside of the home. Travis's mom, Juden, revealed to the Independent that a pet dog also was left unharmed in her son's home when he was killed. The mom of two said, every time she heard Moscow PD say they have to protect the investigation, she kept thinking it's like deja vu of what she's been hearing for a year and a half, and it drives her nuts. She also said she hasn't received anything from the Marion County PD except for her son's autopsy report. She can't get the 911 call either. This seems very similar to the way they are handling the Idaho case. Now remember when law enforcement found a vehicle matching the description of the white Hyundai in Eugene, Oregon totaled and abandoned. Law enforcement stated that the vehicle is not connected to the Idaho murders. They were looking for a white Hyundai Elantra between 2011 and 2013. Brian's car was a 2015. The abandoned white Hyundai was a 2013. They were also looking for a white Hyundai with what seemed like dark tinted windows. Brian's car did not seem to have the tinted windows. But the one found at the scene in Oregon did seem to have tents with no license plates. I don't want to touch it and see if there is a license plate on it, but don't look. Looks like it's stolen. It is totally. Yeah, this is totally stolen. Where's the what's this? I know it's here. The mirror has a mask and some stuff on it. I wonder what that was. Oh, that's a mask. I thought it was a receipt. Now, Eugene is only one hour away from the murders that occurred in 2021 in Salem, Oregon. Is it possible the killer was headed back towards home before ditching the car to escape? And why was this car matching the description found abandoned seven hours away? I had to revisit the case of Caden Young, where the two suspects, Emma and Demetrius, are being charged for his death. According to Truth and Transparency, there's a similar white Hyundai Elantra parked outside of Demetrius' relative's home. This is Demetrius Robinson's family member's vehicle. Um, it is the same vehicle that they were looking for the night of homicides. I 
again, Emma Bailey, Demetrius Robinson arrested for the drugs that allegedly were, um, that had fentanyl in it that killed Caden Young. Here is your vehicle that looks identical um, to what they were looking for, but is also very similar to what they would say Brian Culver's vehicle. What do you guys think? Did we get it wrong? Did the killer get away? We have heard that there's still safety measures in place at the university, even with Brian in jail. Are they truly confident that this is the right guy? They're sure not acting like it. Let me know down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Peace.